Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel and today we are back to getting ready to blow some things up. Um, I have missed my DCS World Birds and uh, I know a bunch of you, you guys have missed the content. Now, um, in uh, with all the changes and everything that's been going on, I decided it was time to build a new server. Or I should say a new mission. So I'm going to be starting the Let's Build a Mission series over in, in uh, uh, DCS. And we're going to be using the Syria map. The Syria map is just absolutely awesome. And then with the with the clouds and the runway damage and all the... Uh, I mean, just my brain's going crazy. Like I got so many ideas. So we are going to be going through that today. Um, I have found a static template online where uh, someone took the time to more or less populate pretty much all of the air bases and uh, so saves us a bunch of time. And so I'm going to be sharing that with you guys as well. We're going to be taking a look today at how to set up your carrier groups, how to set up the um, orbit patterns for the carrier, static aircraft on the deck, <clears throat> excuse me, and as well as a few other things depending on how time goes. Um, I'm also going to show you how to create a, a map template. So that way if you want to create a new mission but you want to have the air bases and things like that already populated and featured, um, you can very quickly do so. Same thing with the carry group. So we're going to be taking a look at a bunch of that today. Basically the, the preliminary stuff for getting a mission together. Um, and then we'll start planning out uh, some battles and strikes. And we're going to be making a test uh, zones, an area where you can go out and just practice and not have to worry about things shooting back at you. Then we'll make a hostile practice zone. You know, again, same thing where obviously the risk is a bit higher, but um, where you have some um, a, a little bit more intensity to it rather than just dropping a, a bomb over a dumb target, you know. Um, so there's going to be a lot of things coming to this mission. I have a lot of great ideas. We're going to be taking a look eventually at CTLD um, and MIST and probably Moose. Uh, Moose, for those of you who don't know, and CTLD, um, well, all three of those really, are uh, scripts that you can run in the background that really enhance the features of the game that don't already exist in it, um, such as JTAX. JTAX is one of the things that gets very, very simplified with um, CTLD, and it... Uh, there's pros and cons, which we'll go over at a later time. I don't want to get too far into that now and get on a ramble because I can get on a tangent with this stuff all day long. However, something to be aware of is I'm going to be saving each stage of this mission. I'm going to be uploading it to my Patreon site. So if you guys are interested in having access to all these missions and all the documents as I go along, please consider subscribing to Patreon. It truly does help out the channel. Um, you do not have to be tier two or above for the DCS content, um, the missions and things like that. You know, just simply any subscription. I think three dollars is, is the lower end um, a month. But uh, you'll be able to also request content and then uh, download anything that I make for DCS as well. Um, you'll have that available. So anyway, without further delay, let's go ahead and get in today's video. Okay, so to start off with today's mission, the first thing we're going to do is come on down to Mission Editor. We're going to go to Create New Mission. Well, actually, back up. Back up. We don't want to do that just yet. I'm going to go to Open Mission. And let's see here. We're going to go with the Syria template here. This is the one I found online. We're going to open this up. And kudos to the creator. Unfortunately, I couldn't find the link again for it. Now, I've had this for quite a while. I just haven't been able to do anything with it. We'll let this load, should be pretty quick. Okay, so this is the kind of stuff that you can see is already done. Now, some of the things that I'm gonna wanna remove, um, I've already removed any AI aircraft that was up flying around or scheduled to fly around. Um, whoa, apparently we're still loading. There we go. So the first thing I do, if you find a map that you want, okay, that you like, you know, and guys, the missions that people make are a great way to start. They save you a ton of time, and there are some very, very creative people out there. Um, so things like this, uh, trigger zone, you know, you can either leave it, you know, as a titling, um, option or not, or you can delete them. Um, for right now, I'll go ahead and actually leave them. Uh Oh, okay. There it goes. That was weird. Come on, DCS, settle down. 
Um, but so if you want to delete the trigger zones, things like that you can come in there. I delete all the AI flights that are up and moving around. An easy way to do that is to come here to your units list and you can filter, for example, let's go ahead and filter by just planes for now. And like these guys are hidden, so we're going to unhide them. You just click on the box, the status box. Come on. There it goes. I don't know why that was being such a pain. All right. So yeah, this is a perfect example. Now these are client. Um, seats. So this is for your players. These aren't AI, but I like to delete the waypoints um, and simply because I want to be able to have a full reign of what everybody's doing. And then be able to oh, got another one, A10C group. Let's find it. There we go. And we're going to delete that. And again, the big reason for this is just, so let's see, what is this? This is a KC-130, so here is going to be a tanker. So we got a tanker or orbiting up over here. But see, like it's got all these waypoints, and we don't need to do it like that. I'm gonna, So I'm going to simplify things quite a bit here. And we'll address that. I'm going to leave all of these here. I may change the titles of some later. It's like, that's really cool. They did the, the Russian writing. Obviously, somebody is much smarter than I am. Um, I have no idea what that means in Russian. Um, I think Russian is such a cool language. I would love to learn Russian. I'm not going to lie. Um, but uh, I think it's a gorgeous language. Um, but uh, anyway, um, I digress. So now I've got it pretty much set the way I want. And, you know, you have random, like, little skirmish groups out here. You know, these are SAM sites um, that we have out here. You can see it looks like there's some sort of uh, storage yard or something here that we can, you know, use for later missions. So a lot of these guys do some really great work and can save you a ton of time, you know. And credit definitely goes to them. I, I you know, I'm very grateful for the community in DCS World and what they do. Um... But uh, anyway, so yeah, you've got little things out here that you can sort of plan your missions around. Now, what I'm still going to do is, you know, at some point, excuse me one second. Sorry about that, I had to cough. Um, is we're going to go through at, at some point during this series and start populating some of the uh, airfields. I'll probably do that off camera, but then come in and show you guys, give you guys examples of what I did. And then again, you'll be able to download my progress at the end of each video. Um, if you are on my Patreon subscription. So, all good stuff there. So let's get into what we're here to do. We're going to start out with a carrier group. As you can see, we don't have one implemented here. So I'm going to show you guys what I've got so far. I actually already have a template set. And we're going to go to Add Template. And don't worry, I'm going to show you how you save it and create it. And it's under USA Category. And we're going to find Carrier Group 1. And then once you have it highlighted, you want to be real careful. You just click. Boom. There it is. Okay, now I'm going to close this window. If you click again, it creates another group and another group and another group. Okay, so you got to make sure you close this window first. And then you can just highlight these, delete the group. Okay, all right. Now let me show you sort of what I've done here because these are set up like this for a reason. This guy here, okay, this boat here is just about three quarters of a mile off the angle deck. Okay. And then this one here is just about a mile ahead of the nose of the boat. And this one here is about a mile to a mile and a half on the perpendicular. Or on the parallel, excuse me. Well, no, perpendicular if you were staring at the conning tower. Um, and the purpose of this is your approach. So first you're going to fly in at 800 feet. At about one mile, you'll make the break. You know, you want to make the break, you know, at uh, what, 1% of your airspeed. So let's call it 3 Gs, 3.5 Gs, depending if you're at 300, 350 knots. Okay, and this is speaking to the Hornet. Um, and ideally, you should come around right about, you know, you know, on lined up with this boat here, you know, give or take a little bit, you know, obviously. But then when you come around for your final, um, you should be coming right over this boat, and you should more or less be on target with your um, lineup here, or with your uh, landing uh, line. 
Now, it's not perfect. The boats are going to vary in speed a bit. Sometimes the boats speed up more than the other ones do. And it shouldn't be something that you depend on, but it's a good training aid. And, and the way I'm building this server is going to be one massive mission. We're going to do sort of a red versus blue takeover, right? Blue's coming into the area and needs to start taking over assets and then creating new assets based on those takeovers. It's going to be pretty cool. Um, sort of like Risk is what we're going to do. Um, or I guess more like Command and Conquer, I guess. Um, but, uh, anyway, I'm also going to have a section, you know, I also want it designed on training, right? The VCW 13, which is my squadron, although I don't get to fly with them very much anymore. Um, we are a training squadron. Okay. Definitely. I would call us a training squadron, but the guys do great at creating their own missions and things like that. And they go up and fly and blow things up. But, um, we also have a lot of guys who are new or possibly inexperienced. And so, you know, we want to have that option of, of training available to them. So anyway. So we have our boat laid down. So I laid down, obviously, the carrier. Okay, now I'm always pretty um, anal about my titling. So I'm going to call this Truman Carrier Group. Okay, and we're just going to call this unit name the Truman, obviously. Right? Then I'm going to come down here. And what I do with these boats is I'm going to call this one Break. That way I can identify them. I know where they are if I need to edit them for any reason. Downwind. And let's see here. We'll just call it final. Okay. And so you got that. And then you can add other support ships if you'd like. And basically, so all you do is you lay down your carrier. And then you're just going to click this arrow over here. Add your group. And, or add a boat, and then you come here and select what kind of boat you want, name it accordingly. You can set the radio frequency. I'm leaving that as default for now. Now what I am going to change is the speed. And the reason why I'm setting it 27 knots is that's about the wind speed that we want over the, uh, over the deck um, at the time of landing. Um, and I'm not going to set the wind in game yet. If that's something that I do later on, we might do. But uh, for right now, I'm just going to leave the wind as off. All right, so now let's add some waypoints. Let's give them a route. So we got our boat out here. We got to think about our battle area. We obviously don't want them too close to the, you know, hostiles. Um, so let's see here. We have this region up here that's already ours. So we're just going to add one here. And we don't want to go too far out, extending out. And then we're going to come here, come down here. And then what I like to do is bring it right here. And then this is where we're going to stop. And on this waypoint four, let's go ahead and hit edit. We're going to go to advanced. We're going to go to add. We're going to go to perform command. And we're going to set go to waypoint. And we're going to set waypoint one. And this will create an endless loop. Okay, so every time that the boat reaches waypoint four, it's going to execute the command to go to waypoint one. Obviously at waypoint one, it gets, you know, it's going to continue the sequence and keep coming around. Okay, so that's the first thing that we want to do. Now, on waypoint zero here, here we go. Activate tac and bearings already set, but we need to set our tac and frequency. And Truman is 7.5, so I typically, I'll use 7.5 as the tac can. Call sign is going to be mom, and we're going to bind it to the Truman. Okay, so that's the first one. Then we're going to add another one and activate ICLS. Okay, and we'll use channel, I don't know, let's use channel four. All right. And same thing, bind it to the Truman, and again, call it Mom ICLS. Okay, boom. So now our boat is set up, or should be set up, for transmission. Now, there used to be a bug. I don't know if it still exists. Um, so I guess we're just going to have to test and find out where the... And actually, you know what? Let's, in case it happens, let's just resolve it now. Um, there was a bug where, after X amount of time, the carriers would stop transmitting their TACAN. Okay, so how we avoid that is at each waypoint, tell them to do it again. So we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to repeat. So this is 7-5, mom, Truman. <clears throat> and what we can actually do here is maybe break this up a little bit. So for example, here we're going to select on zero. We're going to add a waypoint and then like put one here. And let's also go back to edit for a second. You want to make sure you go back to edit, then add again. And let's put another one here, just so that way it repeats a little bit more frequently and we don't have to worry about quite as much. All right. All right, so here's how we have it set up. Each one of these waypoints has this trigger for activate TACAN. 
75 x-ray mom is the uh, call sign and the unit is bound to Truman um, now this should hopefully alleviate any issues that we used to see with the uh, boats not transmitting the tack hand okay all right so that part is done now what we could do here I'm gonna show you guys what we got going on is we can save this whole thing now as a template and then we wouldn't have to repeat this step again so but it's important to remember that with a template when you load it in, it's going to make an exact copy of what you see here, meaning the units are gonna be exactly where you see them now. The waypoints are gonna be exactly as you see them now, okay? So um, that's something that you wanna keep in mind when you're asking yourself, do I wanna use this as a template? So we're gonna go save static template, and let's call this um, Syria one Carrier blue four, all right? And this is just sort of random. Blue four carrier in place. Or we're gonna say carrier waypoints, TACAN, ICLS, okay? And you can hit create. And so now I'm gonna show you guys what I'm talking about here for a second. So let's go to save for a second. Now I'm gonna go to new. And we'll call it Syria. We'll leave all this the same. And it's going to create a brand new map. And now we're going to go with edit, load static template. And Syria 1 blue 4, hit load. Oh, it only did it with that one. Oh, no, it didn't. So now what it did here is it added all of these static objects. And everything else that we have but if you notice it didn't give them a coalition so for example we want to set this to red which means we need to set this to let's use USSR and it's because whatever coalition these were on the original map we don't have it added. So let me show you how to fix that as well. So let's go back to our open. We're gonna say no. We don't wanna save it. Oh, sorry, I'm gonna say yes. And we're gonna go back to the previous mission that we did. And now we need to check and see what coalition these guys are, because that's what happened there. So it's Russia, okay? So let's just double check everything here. Yep, Russia, Russia, Russia. Oh, that's Syria. Okay, so we need to make sure Russia and Syria are added to our coalition. So let's do this. So when we go to our create new mission, let's try this again. You can see that they're missing from here. So let's go scroll down here and we're gonna find Syria and we're gonna move them over. Let's find Russia and move them over, okay, to the red coalition, hit okay. And now when we load our, our static template we should get them in the correct coalition when it loads. Okay, so we still have a couple. Anything that's white here, we have to watch for. Oh, those are Syria. Interesting. Ah, Iran, that's what we're missing. So again, you guys obviously understand how to rinse and repeat that process. So let's just go back again. One more time, we'll fix that real quick. I actually did not want to do that. So again, I ran Russia, Syria, hit okay. And I'll show you why guys in a second why I did not want to start all over again. Didn't have to do that. I took an extra step that I didn't need to take. So let's see if we missed anybody. That would be a good time to show the example here. Oh, it looks like we did. Okay. So these guys look like they're on the, these guys were blue for if I remember correctly. So we got Israel, perfect example. All right, so instead of reloading the mission like I did before, what we can actually do is there is a coalition manager now. Uh, I gotta find it though, it's been a minute. There we go, changing coalitions. 
So now what we need to do is find Israel and bring them to the blue four. Hit OK. And now they're blue. And same thing with any of these static. So we're going to set the airports blue is what we're doing here. Okay, any of these white boxes, they're just these are the airport names. You just need to associate their color with what? With where they are. So again, we're gonna take these guys. And I'm not gonna do all of them yet, because I don't know if I want to change anything up or not. But there we go. And again, like I said, our carrier is here. And if we come over to our carrier, we can see all the same information that we had before is already set and ready for us. So we can even go to the other waypoints and just like we had added that. So now I don't ever have to worry about that again. Okay, and you can do this with just the carrier. Okay, now the thing about static templates though that you have to remember, when you do a static template, it's bound to the map. Okay, because remember I said, these units are put exactly where they are on the, on the mission that you copied them from. So whenever you're doing a static template, you need to make sure that you understand that they are bound to the map. So if I wanted to, for example, use this group on the uh, Caucasus map, I would have to go to the Caucasus map, make this group again, and then save it, and then I could use it in the future. Okay? So I can't use this template, obviously, on a, you know, Nevada map or, you know, whatever. Obviously, I wouldn't use a carrier on the Nevada map, but, you know, what the hell? Some people might get bold. But uh, anyway, so that's that. That's creating static templates and quickly loading in a mission. Um, and, uh, you know, like I said, you guys can download some really awesome missions from the uh, DCS website and uh, use them to sort of populate your missions. Now, one last thing that I want to show you guys is uh, creating a group template. Okay, if there's a specific group that you want to be able to use again in the future. So, example, we could click on this guy here. Um... I actually think that's in the game. Let's find something else. Okay, like maybe like this. So what we could do, if I remember correctly, we can hit shift. Yep, hold your shift key down. Click on each one of these, oops. Uh oh. Trying not to move them. My mouse is super sensitive. Oh, moved it. Dang it. I'm trying to go slow so I don't move anything else. There we go. Okay. And I believe we can do... I don't know if it's just going to do it by the one group. It might just do it from this group. We'll see. But I believe we can now go to Add Template. Okay. And here is Create New Template. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's just grabbing the one. Let's just try it. Let's call it test. And we're going to save template. And you can see it's now up here. And let's see here. Yeah, it only takes the one. Darn it. So if you create a group, basically, is where I was going with that. So for example, if you wanted these trucks, this is actually kind of cool. This is actually a nice way to, to use this for like creating airports and things. So let's use this one. This is a better example. Grab this one group, and we can go to Edit, go to Add Template, and again, create it, and just call it, um, you know, uh, what do you want to call this? Uh, transport, come on, why are you doing that? Give me that. Oh, template name helps if I'm in the right field. Transport Template, okay, and we hit Save Template. Oh. It means there's already one there, so now we can come up to Siri. There we go, transport template. And now you can do that. Okay. So it makes it easy when you're like populating runways or airfields and things like that with service trucks or, you know, you create a battalion group. You know, you could have this be a tank, maybe a couple of supply trucks, some soldiers. You know, you can lay them out in a very specific formation that you'd want to use again. And then you could create your template and, you know, um, uh, be able to use it in the future. You just need to make sure they're all in the same group. Okay. I was hoping that my other way that I first tried to do would work, but I was wrong. I was wrong. But anyway, guys, that is the static templates and group templates tutorial of this. 
Um, stay tuned for the next one, and we're going to start taking a look at populating some airfields. I'm going to do that off camera, but when we come back, I will show you guys what I've done, so that way you guys have some ideas. And again, um, you guys can take any of the things that you see in these videos, and you can download the mission if you're part of my Patreon subscription, and you guys will be able to use them for your later missions as well and save them as templates. So, something to think about. All right, guys, I will catch you guys in the next one. Stay tuned for a lot more DCS content.